Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rod, uh, for the invitation. So my name is Johnny Safara. Um, I am the CEO and founder of uh, Ornsoft. So Ornsoft is uh, an AI software house. So we have been uh, we've been around since 2009, um, working in many different countries and uh, helping many different types of uh, um, companies. The objective of, of this presentation is to, uh, to make you understand what is this technology. Uh, we've been hearing uh, about AI since the beginning of the year, uh, a lot. And uh, some stuff were true, some were not really, but uh, there is a big buzz. And, uh, and the, the, the goal, my goal today is to make you understand what is AI and how it can help you really. So first, uh, let's talk about demystifying AI. So the, the, the first thing I would like to, uh, to say is uh, uh, the survey that was done by the leading scientists, uh, leading AI scientists. And according to those uh, AI scientists, 50% of them are saying that there is one chance out of 10 that we are actually all going to die uh, with uh, this AI. Uh, that's, uh, that's quite a, a statement. And um, ju just so you understand, uh, it's like saying uh, there is 50% of the engineers who did build uh, the plane, saying that if you build the plane, you have one chance out of 10 to die. So uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you, if you uh, I will not take the plane, to be honest. Huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, so we, we did start really to speak about AI since 2020. People uh, did um, the hype, let's say, uh, started. But AI started a long time ago. Uh, it started in 1950s uh, when the basic concept of AI was created. Uh, the, the first uh, person who fantasized about AI uh, was called uh, Alan Turing. And uh, he said that there is a basic set of questions. And if the machine can answer those questions, the same way human being will answer those questions, it means that the reasoning and the, 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 the reasoning of the machine is matching the one uh, of the human being. So that's great, uh, very, very nice concept. In 1956, the real birth of AI uh, happened with the first machine learning. Uh, and I will, I will get so soon into details of what machine learning means. And then the first uh, neural networks in 1957. So since the 50s, all the way up to about 2017, there was progress, um, but not that much, right? Uh, uh, each field of AI was um, was really uh, uh, individually uh, developed and the progress was really uh, segmented per type of AI. There was AI for audio, there was uh, AI for uh, uh, images, there was AI for voice, there were many different types of AI. And when you were studying and learning about one type of AI, it was uh, uh, not the same books, uh, not the same uh, way to learn as the other types of AI. Th those types uh, are, uh, are, are used in many different fields, right? Sometimes they are combined. And what happened in 2017 uh, is called, uh, th there is a paper that was published by researchers uh, at Google uh, regarding a, a technology uh, called transformers. Okay. Transformers are uh, very important, and that's what did uh, uh, made the big change because the, 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 that allowed the convergence of all the AIs into one uh, main AI. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to 
formulate it a different way. Imagine you have images, okay, and you have uh, text, and you have video. The text, for us, it's uh, simple to understand. There is uh, a text that can be uh, understood by AI and then, uh, and then processed by AI. Now, if we talk about video, video is a completely different type, a different type of processing, uh, etc. So what does the, the transformer technology do? Is convert this uh, uh, file into its basi basic elements. It transform uh, this file into its basic element. Basic element is binary file. I'm not sure if you're familiar with binary, but it's like a, a basic computer language. Uh, and the transformer technology will do this for all the formats. So when it does this to all the formats, then the principle of, uh, of AI to learn and understand and uh, 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 it will not be different from one uh, type of AI to another. They're all the same now. So the, 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 I, I will get more into exactly how it's working uh, soon, but now you have to understand all those incremental uh, uh, advancements for each type of AI that was very slow since the 1950s are now all converged into one. And when one scientist does an advancement in one, uh, one field, it's benefiting all the fields. So that, that made the first uh, real stimulation of AI. So let's see a little more. This is actually uh, the graph. You can see from uh, 1950s to 17 was uh, not that big, right? 2017, uh, the transformer model, and transformer model, you, you can see this as an engine, a new engine to process. Uh, the information was born. The scientific uh, community uh, took this technology and uh, uh, used it across all the industries, uh, uh, all the types of AIs. 2017 to 2018, uh, you, you can see the, the curve goes up. And then something happened in 2018. A new uh, type of engine again called Generative Pre-trained Transformer, and that was released by the OpenAI uh, community, because back then it was open source and uh, an actual community. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, pre-trained transformer was a very, uh, very, uh, uh, I, I'm going to explain because this, this is very important to understand. This is not a new concept, pre-trained transformer. Uh, You've been using, most, uh, most uh, of you, I'm sure, uh, cell phones since uh, at least the 90s, the text messaging, you know, where you were starting to type a word and it was finishing the word or su su suggesting the next word. Th this is the technology that's used uh, for the, uh, the um, generative pre-trained transformer, just at a much higher scale, right? Because there's billions of information. So what does it do? It's trying to guess the best way possible what will be the next word. And this is the way for it to generate the, the end of the sentence, for example. Now, it, if you take this into its basic element, like we said earlier, you have the beginning of a text. It can finish it for you. You have the beginning of an image. It can finish it for you. Same thing for a video, same thing for an audio. The, uh, we know today that with, uh, with a few seconds of audio of your voice, AI can generate much more and, and do whatever it wants. Same, same thing for images, right? So that's really uh, uh, the technology uh, where we are at today. 2018, that was released. That stimulated even more uh, the uh, community. Uh, the adoption was very high, and you can see 2018 to 2022, it went even uh, uh, faster. Now, 2022, November 2022, that, that was not so long ago, huh? uh, ChatGPT was released. 
ChatGPT was released, and something even greater happened. And we are, we are not talking about adoption by the uh, scientific uh, community or, or uh, 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 really uh, only technical people. We are talking about human adoption of the technology. November 2022, ChatGPT was released. January, two months later, they already reached uh, 100 million users in two months. So to, to give you an idea, huh, uh, the fastest one before that uh, who reached 100 million uh, 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 was uh, Instagram, and it took them two years. So uh, in human history, it, it never happened something like this. This was a big uh, uh, signal uh, uh, to uh, all, uh, uh, all those uh, smart people doing business saying, oh, maybe it's time, right? So, uh, and, and I'm sure you, you've had the same, uh, uh, the, the same reasoning. Now, let, let's break it down a, a little bit, uh, talk about the basic concept of, uh, of AI. Obviously, there is much more, but I, I'm going to try to make you uh, understand the logic behind it. We have uh, four different uh, elements that will uh, compose the AI. The first thing is called the data set. So the data set, it's very simple. Huh? Th those are the information that we will use uh, as a training. So we want to learn, we need information, right? The second one is called a neural network. So the neural network, uh, I like to see it as the neurons, and actually that was the, the idea be behind it. Uh, neural networks, is the neuron that are in the brain where you store the information and connect those information together. The third one is called machine learning. This is a very common word also. You've been uh, uh, hearing this word most likely a lot. Machine learning is uh, compared to the synapse. Uh, the synapse meaning the, the things that will, uh, that will make the information work together. That's also what mimic the reasoning of the human being. I know this, I know that, maybe, and, and I can extrapolate. Now, by combining those things, that will give birth to what we call the model, and the model is the actual thing that will be used to do the job. So, the intellect. Now you know things, you can do things. To, I, I would like to do an analogy with with the first human being. So, and, and to make sure that's uh, very clear for, for everyone, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm giving this analogy a lot to uh, some clients, a lot of clients actually, and uh, they, they seem to like it. So, this first human being, imagine it's night, and he's seeing uh, fire. First thing that comes to his mind is, something shiny. So first information that's stored in his neurons, in his brain, is that there is something shiny. This human being is getting closer. He's getting closer and he realizes that fire is warm. Second information, fire is warm. Now what happened with the machine learning? A third information is born saying fire is good. Who gave him this information that fire is good? Nobody. He did uh, end up realizing that this is good because, and, and this is the, the, what we try to mimic with the machine learning. Now, you can go even further. Uh, he's getting even closer, trying to touch the fire. Now, what happened? Fire burn. Fire burn, fire can cook, fire is dangerous, fire this, fire that a lot of other information are going to populate the brain. Those information has, have not been given by anyone. They have been produced by the brain. And where it's interesting is, you remember at the beginning, we said fire is good. Now, fire is not so good anymore. <laughs> so uh, fire is not so good, so it can also correct the information it had in the brain. 
That's the main difference with other technology. Before that, we had a great deal of automation. Uh, we had a great deal of, uh, of uh, uh, trying to do things that looks like human beings were doing it. But the goal of uh, AI is really to uh, mimic human uh, processing uh, without the constraint, of course, uh, because we, uh, we know that uh, AI don't sleep, uh, AI uh, don't take vacation, is not sick, and uh, of course, work way much more faster than human beings. We'll get back to this information later. Now, there's different types of AIs, and all those types are basically combining different, uh, different uh, technologies, always in AI. And by, uh, by doing this, you can achieve different things. The first one is called curative AI. So the curative AI is the one that will help you uh, uh, find a solution and uh, do things to fix things. So that's uh, uh, the most common one in business. Uh, we have a problem here. We need an AI to do this. And, and that's uh, what it does. The second one, and this one is very popular now, is the generative AI. Uh, the generative AI is capable of creating uh, new content, uh, ideas, images. That's the one we talked about a little earlier. The third one is called predictive AI. So this one is capable of, of seeing uh, through a lot of information things that happened in the past, uh, not just basic uh, events, but also go into details thousands, hundreds of thousands of parameters, uh, compute all those information, and give you uh, an idea of what will happen next. And finally, the third one, that's, the, my, my, that's my, uh, my, my uh, uh, opinion, but I, I think this the most powerful one is the prescriptive AI. So in addition to being able to tell you this what may happen, or this will happen, it will tell you also how you can avoid it, how you can take advantage of it, what's the best way, and suggest what you should do next. Those, those, uh, those uh, things could be used in uh, uh, many uh, different uh, areas of business. As you, can, uh, as you can see, there is no an industry that, uh, that will benefit more than another uh, from AI. It can be used in any department. It can be in marketing, accounting, operation, administrative, of course, uh, legal, sales, support, etc. Everyone can benefit from AI. Now, the, the, the idea, the, the most important thing is to identify really if you need it and where you need it. Because it's not just to say, oh, I, I want to do this. No, there, there is an actual uh, logical uh, way to identify and say, OK, this can be done by AI. Uh, this can be fixed by AI. And uh, that, that's, uh, we have an um, uh, AI implementation action plan, uh, if we can say, uh, that you can download. I, I, after a presentation, I will, uh, I will uh, make, make those uh, documents available to everyone. You can download it, just go through it and see with your own company. You will see that uh, it can help a lot. Now, we've done a benchmark with our own AI. Obviously, we, we have our own software also. And this is the latest benchmark we did. Uh, it was uh, uh, the beginning of the year. And to give you an idea where we stand right now, uh, our AI can execute a week of work done by 50 highly trained people in less than two hours with a five times better quality. So just realize the amount of work we are talking about, the AI can do it in about two hours. Uh, the benefit that you can uh, get from this is not just, OK, uh, obviously the, the, the main one is, uh, is money, right? but also time, uh, uh, the, 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 the client satisfaction. You know, when the client doesn't need to wait 
uh, a week or a few days to get his answer, and uh, he can have it right away within two hours. That's, uh, that's, uh, that can be huge. O also imagine when uh, you have to uh, uh, approve a loan or, uh, or process a, a project or whatever. This can be done in a few hours. Uh, usually it's taking a half a day, two days. So that we are talking a lot uh, of benefits from this kind of technology. Now, if you're not, uh, if you're not uh, uh, convinced yet that you should board the plane, <laughs> uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give some examples uh, of first AI uh, implementation that went wrong. And then I'm going to give you examples of uh, uh, AI uh, implementation that went very well. Um, with a little more details. <coughs> so first, the, the implementation that went wrong. There is quite a lot. I did select a few, some from uh, big companies, some from smaller ones. And uh, in, uh, I, I tried to uh, find things in different industries. Mainly when it goes wrong, uh, there is a reason. Uh, the first reason could be because the AI uh, used the wrong data to learn. So imagine you have a new employee and uh, you tell him, you know what, I'm going to teach you what you have to do. And you teach him the wrong way. Uh, this employee is going to do a bad job. Uh, are you going to tell him, hey, you did a bad job? Uh, you don't trade me well. Uh, or you want me to do a good job? You know, it's, it's, a, it's a logical thing, right? So uh, the, the, it's the same thing with AI. First thing, and most of those problems are coming from, uh, coming from bad uh, data set. The second reason is that limitation of the technology. So sometime, and that happened a lot, uh, we, uh, uh, I've seen it uh, mainly during the hype of AI in 2021, 2022, uh, people saw ChatGPT or Bard or some other uh, generative AI, they said, oh, great, that's it. I'm firing everyone from my support department. I put the chatbot. <laughs> oh, okay, you can try, but uh, th that may be a problem. <laughs> um, the AI ended up talking to client. Uh, oh, you have a problem with your car, guarantee we replace the car. The client comes in, okay, where is my new car? No, sir, we don't, reply the, we don't replace the car, you know, it's a, it's a, but the, uh, the agent said, you replace my car. I don't care, it's your problem. But it's, a, it's an, I don't care. And, and you end up with a lawsuit. So, you see the risk, the liability, it's not because you use an AI that you're not liable, right? You have a business, uh, you have to be very careful what you do with this technology. I, I, I'm not saying it's, it, not, it cannot be done. I'm saying it has to be done the right way. Um, you see, uh, for, for in these examples, uh, we have the COVID-19. Uh, that, that was a very famous one. Uh, the technology was, I, I, I really believe the technology was working. And the main problem was the data set, like, uh, like we just said. Uh, we have some chat that were uh, telling patient, uh, kill yourself, it's better, you will feel good. Uh, so that <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's a problem also. Um, some were biased uh, because uh, uh, there is also a problem with the data. Uh, the, the, the AI sees that a man is always at this position, has been trained with hundreds of thousands of information. It's going it's to think that, okay, maybe man is better for that job, you know? Uh, while it's not true, uh, we, today we can, we can say this with uh, certitude. Um, and uh, the latest one I, I saw is from a lawyer in, in New York who used uh, ChatGPT uh, to prepare a, a filling and the AI made up information. Uh, it was using uh, uh, information that for the appeal and uh, everything that went after that that did not exist. And when the judge saw this, he said, wait a minute, let me check. He checked, 
and this information didn't exist. So uh, the, uh, his career uh, finished on, on the spot, right? But uh, but uh, you you realize that uh, uh, it, it could be used, but the right way. Uh, generative AI uh, uh, is very powerful. We believe it can be used uh, in a certain manner. I'm going to give the next example and uh, we'll see how it can be used the right way. So, the real world application of AI the right way. Uh, I'm going to give an example uh, first how we did implement. To be honest, uh, it was difficult to get the approval from clients uh, on sharing information that may be confidential. Uh, the first one is regarding our company, how we did it, because I have no problem sharing this information. And the second one is uh, from a local business here in Miami. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll go over it and, and, and I will explain what, uh, what type of AI was implemented and how. So, the first, uh, the first example is regarding uh, customer support. So, in our company, we have clients, and those clients, uh, when they have a contract, uh, can raise a, 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 a ticket uh, when there is an anomaly or whatever question they may have. Now, at the beginning, they were sending email to, uh, to the company, and to handle those uh, emails, we had uh, two human agents. Right? Uh, those were uh, technical support people, junior two years experience, uh, paid between 20 and 25 dollars an hour. And they were, uh, to be honest, very efficient, but um, the amount of uh, tickets grows as you uh, acquire new clients, right? So what did we do? We did try to uh, uh, centralize those requests into an extranet. Well, the extranet is like a client portal where clients can go open a ticket. Till now, nothing special, right? Clients were uh, okay with that, of course, but didn't want to go there and open the ticket, and they were still sending emails. So we did uh, add an extra layer, and that was not AI, it was automation. A lot of people out there are trying to sell you things or, or tell you about things that are uh, AI, but they are not. This is automation. We did build a bot that was monitoring the mailbox, and when there is an email, taking the email, go in the platform, open the ticket. Uh, that's not AI, right? Now, that helped a lot, of course, but, uh, but something happened because you reach a certain point where uh, you have, uh, uh, you, you are at capacity and the next step is to hear another person. You cannot just say, okay, I'm going to pay a little more and I can, uh, I can handle more. No, no. You need an extra salary or, or at least part-time, right? So what did we do? We had about 300 tickets a month for two full-time employees. That's uh, uh, six to eight thousand uh, dollars a month for those uh, two employees, and average about eighty thousand dollars for the year. I I'm giving numbers to, to show you uh, to show you really the impact. Okay. What happened uh, once we did uh, we did uh, change this uh, this. Uh, uh, this uh, step of uh, human agent. Uh, just so you understand why we have this step. Uh, went a little fast on this one. We have this step because when the ticket comes in, we don't want the, the engineer to work on it right away. Maybe there is not enough information. Maybe it's not a bug. The, the engineers are very expensive, right? Uh, we, we don't want them to lose time trying to guess what the client is trying to say, right? So that's why we have this uh, layer in the middle uh, with this uh, technical support agent. So, before, we used to have those 
uh, technical support uh, junior uh, two years experience agent between 20 and 25 dollars an hour two full-time employees so that's about uh, $80,000 a year for those two people to take care of those tickets there can be a delay about 24 hours based on the SLA yeah, based on the on the contract but uh, when the company is closed uh, nobody is going to answer uh, you have to wait tomorrow morning those two people were at capacity and if we want to handle more we have to hear more people now after we did implement AI in this uh, uh, department. What, this is what happened. Instead, two people, we still kept one part-time. Uh, and I, I will explain soon why. This person is still paid bet between 20 and 25 an hour. Uh, that's about 19,000 a year. Now, with this, there is a near real-time answer to the ticket. Unlimited capacity. Uh, there is no limit anymore. It's not going to cost more. Uh, and uh, to uh, show you, you see on the right, the implementation cost of the AI uh, for, for this uh, department was $20,000 for the license. There is other fees uh, the processing fee, because each time the, the AI is thinking it's costing money, right? Uh, of uh, 50 cents per question. So the total cost for the first year was 40,800. If we compare this to the 80,000 uh, when we had two people, this is already 50% uh, uh, um, saving on the expense. And I'm not talking about the user satisfaction, uh, uh, to, to augment the capacity, uh, people are very happy and, and, and they engage. And if we want to, to, take, to take on more clients, we'll not be worrying about, oh la la, we have to find someone and hear people. Uh, no, that, that's, uh, that's covered now. Also, you see this, the, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm saying here the cost for the first year because the initial 20,000 implementation, this is only the first year. So the, the next year, we're going to make even more savings. So it's very, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, it's a simple example. But uh, I think it's very effective to, to make you understand uh, how, how it can be done. Now, regarding the technology, when I say the right way, what does it mean? In this scenario, the AI is going to communicate with clients. The ticket comes in. What does the AI do? The AI will read the ticket, understand what the client says or wants. It's going to go check who's the client, what project the client did with us, the history of all the tickets that were opened by this client, who's taking care of this project, and based on this, reply to the client. We need more information. Uh, is it the same as this, this, and that? Or uh, Thank you for, the, uh, the, for raising this ticket. We'll take care of it as soon as possible. And the AI will assign the ticket automatically to the right person in the company. So you, all these jobs usually require the human uh, intellectual uh, job. You see, it's not automation. Huh? Uh, it's really thinking, seeing, understanding, and then taking action. That's what's done by the AI uh, in here. Now, let's move on to the next uh, example. This company, Diaries Doors. So those are based locally uh, north, uh, in North Miami. Uh, they offer modern luxury interior doors, uh, and they manufacture those doors. Now, when they get an order, this is the process they have today. Um, I, I'm telling you, I, I will not be able to share financial information. I'm not allowed to do it. Uh, they do not accept. But I can give some details on what we did and uh, what was the gain out of it. So usually the client requests an estimate. Uh, when they request this estimate, they send, uh, they send or a plan 
or they give the requirements what they want. I want $20, $10. Uh, usually, uh, you, you don't order one door for your house. Huh? You, you, you change the set, right? And uh, the agent, the person on the phone, will take the information and prepare the estimate. <coughs> they send the estimate, the client approves the estimate, and when this happens, they, gener they generate what they call the master sheet. A master sheet is a document where there is all the information, uh, detailed information, the size, uh, the way the door should open, uh, etc. the material that should be used. There, there is a lot of information in this document. Now, they generate this document and they, they have one person going, going to the client on the field, uh, going over the master sheet with the client and based on what the client says, adjust uh, maybe this door suppose not to open uh, like this, but like that. Uh, this material, uh, he wants uh, metal instead wood. We don't know. There is always change orders. Now, they do, they take all this information in the, uh, in the master sheet and then go back to, uh, to uh, the office. When they get to the office, they do what they call a reconciliation. Whatever information that has been added or modified in the master sheet need to be reflected on the estimate. Now, that's the, what I call the pain point. The pain point meaning this job was heavy, uh, risky, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, for this company was a real problem because there was about 5%, 5 to 10% uh, issues with those uh, reconciliation. So once this reconciliation is done, then there is a, a, a change order that is sending out, update the estimate, client sign, to be honest, uh, when you see it like this, it seems pretty solid, bulletproof almost, and, uh, and, uh, and supposed to be fine. They used to have four people um, to do this reconciliation, and per project was taking up to three hours. So uh, ju just to make you realize, it's a lot of work uh, for a lot of people. Uh, it's not a simple task. Now, after uh, we implement the AI, this is what happened. Before they had the four uh, people full time, they were at capacity. Uh, not everyone could do the job. You cannot use uh, someone that knows the job that you hear and they, are, uh, they can work right away. You have to teach them, make them understand why and how it works and all this. So it was difficult to increase the capacity. Three hours per project, they were weeks behind uh, on uh, reconciliation, that's a problem because reconciliation is not done, the actual final estimate is not signed. Uh, final estimate is not signed, you cannot start the project. So it's, a, it's, a, it's not a minor problem, it's a huge problem. After we implement the AI, there was one person full time, we kept one person. The capacity now is unlimited because it's AI, right? Uh, the time for this person uh, went from uh, three hours, uh, uh, four people, to 20 minutes, one person. And uh, for the, uh, the, the reconciliation, uh, at least the AI part is near instant. And if they want to do more, they, they don't have any problem anymore. So ju just to, uh, to give you an idea, this is uh, in terms of time and resources, a 97% gain. That's huge. Uh, the, the, they are very happy and now we are working on other departments, but uh, I, I can tell you the, the when AI comes in, it's not only a 10% gain that you will, it's way much more. Remember, huh, the, the AI is uh, working way much more than the human being. If trained properly, can do better job, so it's a big gain. The, the last time we saw such a big uh, benefit and advancement was uh, uh, the last uh, industrial revolution in the late 1800s, 
beginning 1900s, when uh, human labor wa was replaced by machines uh, in the factories. Uh, did people suffer from it? Yes, okay. Uh, did we benefit from it? Um, civilization, I mean, uh, yes. Uh, wh was it avoidable? No. And, uh, and, uh, and what is sure is that the one that did jump uh, in, the, in the train, uh, those are the ones that stayed after that, the, the other one disappeared. So I, I, I think it's pretty clear that to have an AI today is not an option. You will have to take it. Don't wait too long because the competitor will not wait for it. Uh, and uh, uh, just be very careful on, on how you do it. Always, uh, always ask yourself what's the liability? What will happen if it goes wrong? I'm not talking about just uh, it doesn't work while well, it can cost a lot of money. Huh? So you, you see the, the, that's one risk. There is no real liability behind it unless it kills someone, right? But, uh, uh, but, uh, but when there is an AI doing something for someone, you must be careful. Now, if we want to talk about the future of AI. So the future of AI, I think, and that's my opinion, uh, is the convergence between uh, machines and uh, and AI, uh, the, the, the body with the brain, right? Uh, the body with the brain, actually uh, the future is already here and it's moving very fast. Uh, there is a company, and I did find this example very interesting, who did uh, appoint as its CEO uh, an AI. And this company, uh, it's a big company, large company, huh? they, are, they are in stock exchange and uh, they have uh, thousands of employees. Uh, is now managed by the, an AI. They, uh, between the time they did appoint the new CEO and uh, uh, about six months later, uh, the stock went up by 10%, uh, profit uh, skyrocketed uh, without them having to sell much more or firing anyone. So you see the, the, that's uh, pretty impressive. Uh, just by operating better without causing any damage to anyone, if I can say, you can actually turn things uh, much better. Th there is some more examples uh, about that, but uh, uh, I, I did find this uh, very interesting. I'm, I'm pretty sure soon we will uh, see much uh, more of those, uh, uh, more, more of those uh, uh, helping us in our personal lives and also in the business. For now, replace the employee completely no, I don't think so. Assist the employees? Yes. No. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, if, if anyone has questions, I yes? Question. Ah. <laughs> um, how long from like when you started working with the, with your company until you had a test bed? Did that take? And then, how do you monitor it once you put it in place to make sure it's still okay? Very good question. Okay, so for the company to prepare the data set, because that, that's really, they took more time than, than us, actually, uh, to put in place. So they took about a month to get the documents ready because uh, we are uh, dealing with documents. Uh, we, we have a software that is specialized in what we call hyper-automation. So intelligent document processing. Uh, we can just, once those documents are ready, uh, give them to the AI, tell the AI what to verify on those documents. Uh, you have the estimate, you have the master sheet, this uh, should match with this, this should match with that. Once this is done, the training goes very fast. Uh, the training takes about an hour or two. Uh, after that, you need to use uh, the AI. So that's the time that took about uh, maybe three to six months. And uh, within that time, uh, but don't get me wrong, uh, when you put it uh, in there, uh, it's uh, deployed, 
it's going to be maybe at 50% uh, capacity, uh, meaning capacity of, of doing the job. This is why we keep a human being in the loop. The human being will see what the job, uh, the AI is doing, correct if something is not okay. The same way you will do with a new employee. You have a new employee, you go over, you say, okay, here you did a mistake, here it's okay. And uh, after uh, six months, you tell him, okay, now leave me alone, do your job, uh, I have no time. You know? <laughs> so it's about the same thing. Yes? Oh, yes, political campaign is a, uh, the, the main risk uh, I, I can think of is uh, hallucination. So hallucination, the, the technology, the AI technology, and, and again, uh, uh, in political, it could be used for prediction, uh, you know, or, or as a prescriptive, uh, tell us what should be done or, or where we should go, or th there is different ways to use it. But I believe the main way today people will use it is more to generate content, for example. Generate content. Make sure to use a, a, a technology that will be evidence-based. Meaning the generative technology should be used to understand the request, to generate an answer, but not as the base of the knowledge. Because it has so much in the brain, if uh, uh, you ask it about something and it doesn't have the information, because it has so much, it's going to make up information. And that's uh, when problems happen. Uh, we have another technology called GVK, not GPT. Uh, this technology will take a set of information that we will provide, get the question, generate an answer based on this knowledge that we did provide, and give the proof the source of the information along the answer. That's the right way to use it. So, uh, yes, the, the, I believe that will be the, the, highest, the, the highest risk. Yes? Sure, sure. That's a, that's a, a very good point. If uh, if you don't have the knowledge of uh, the different ways technologies are working, uh, the the AI is not one uh, one type. <coughs> there is different types of AI and different ways to process the information. What you just said is very true. For example, ChatGPT. Uh, again, uh, I'm. They're not going to like me a lot, but <laughs> uh, the, the, when you go in there, and, and I, I like this one. I go in there and I ask it not so long ago, who won the, uh, the World Cup uh, uh, soccer? Uh, it, was, it was still saying it's uh, France. <laughs> so that, for me, that's okay, but uh, the <laughs> uh, you, you can imagine if you ask it about something else that you need in your business, uh, current information, that's not going to work. This technology I was just mentioning, the GVK, is working a different way. You take the current information, you provide it as a document, PDF. The AI will ingest it uh, in a, a vector format. So I, I'm not going to get too much into the tec technical, but basically what it will do is when you ask it something, it will understand go in the base of knowledge that you did provide, look for the information. We, we are doing uh, right now an experiment with uh, 
uh, and that will, uh, will tell you, uh, it's not so far from the example that, that you have, but uh, we do an experiment now with the uh, CTI uh, of Miami website, where, uh, you know, when you do construction, it can be very complicated very quickly. Uh, not just for us people trying to change something uh, in our house, you know, but even them, when you call them, sometimes, you know, they, they need time to find the answer. Uh, and that can be a problem. So we went on the website, did an experiment, took some of the information just uh, by printing them as PDF. We did put them in a folder. And we used the generative AI. We tried with ChatGPT, bar, some others that could be uh, installed locally in your company if you have privacy issues. And uh, we plugged those uh, technologies with the GVK technology. Now, what happened when you ask the question, the, the, the chat GPT technology, the, the GPT technology will be used to understand what you say, look for the information, get back the information, generate the answer, and give you the link to the, the, the actual file where it did uh, find your information for you. So if you use it that way, you will not have problems because if it's not in the base that you provide, it cannot make up an answer. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.